Here to discuss this, two men in the economic know. Sean Hyman is the editor of the Ultimate Wealth Report, and alongside us here at the Anchor Desk, it's our friend Jeff Yastine, editorial director of Newsmax Financial Letters. Uh, Sean and Jeff, we thank you both for coming in and talking, giving us the maximum about the minimum wage. Sean, as you Skype in, let me start with you. In your article, you say you see a direct correlation between minimum wage employees in our economy. First, let's talk about the eventual tipping point between minimum wage employees and inflation. Yeah, I mean, inflation has you know is, is going to continue to go up, and of course, the ones that it's going to hit the hardest are the ones that are at the lower end of the scale. Uh, you know, inflation goes up about at least four percent per year, and and wages go up minimally, probably about two percent per year for the average worker, but much less than that for the minimum wage worker. So this gap continues to, to, to widen. And unfortunately, some people are building careers out of these minimum wage jobs, which were never really meant to be, you know, career build, uh, career type jobs in the, in the first place. And so uh, it's really going to hit them the hardest. But eventually, I mean, it's going to cause a lot of ruckus, a lot of eventual riots in the streets one day as we see a lot of these strikes, uh, you know, building their, um, uh, you know, starting to build more momentum. Thank you, Sean. Now, Jeff, let's bring you in. The Seattle City Council votes today to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, yes. which is what the McDonald's employees striked for a couple weeks ago. Now, let's talk about that. If that actually is enacted, what's the economic impact and what's the fallout associated with that? It's, it's, it's all sort of a local thing at this mm -hmm. point. I mean, in Seattle, Seattle's economy is doing very well because it's so centered on technology, and it's already a very expensive place to live. Right. So there, you know, there's plenty of money around I don't think people are going to complain too much if the operators of a McDonald's or Burger King franchise, those sorts of things, uh, decide to raise the price prices of their Big Macs and, and what have you. Uh, but in a lot of other areas, it's going to have significant impacts. It either means, to some degree, either closings of some units, fewer workers, uh, and higher prices for the product. And again, right. it just depends on what how it works out locally and what a small business owner franchisee can sort of make work for his business model, her well, business model. Jeff, let's drill down, that, drill down on that a little bit more. We've seen from Hamburger University, that is McDonald's yes. corporate headquarters, now the automated customer self-service where you go in and you, you basically punch yeah. what you're going to yeah. have and, and you do it yourself, as we've seen with checkout counters at the grocery store and, my goodness, even with ticketing at airports. Is this the next inevitable step for most fast food franchisees? Uh, I think it is. If you can sort of take away some of the cost of having employees on the front end, you can still have uh, the more expensive automation would be having somebody doing uh, flipping, having a robot flipping burgers in the back, right? So you still have somebody doing that work in the back, but if you can have it automated on the front end, sort of a self-service, certainly it's 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 a no-brainer. But I think we're some still some distance away from that. It's probably going to take three, four years before franchisees and the and the parent corporations figure out exactly where their costs are with a fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage if it can, if it came to pass nationally. And Sean, to go back to you, you predicted riots in the streets. What would you tell people that accuse you of fear mongering, doom and gloom? What's your response to that? Well, you know, I mean, to me, it's just the progression of time. I mean, you know, I mean, we, minimum wage workers have always been at the low end of the totem pole and not made a lot of money. But we haven't seen riots or, or anything of that sort yet. But we have seen strikes, and those started in 2012. And then here we are again in 2014. And not only are those strikes here in the U.S., but they're spreading globally you know, to over 150 locations now. And so uh, this is starting to get more and more pronounced as inflation continues to grow, as it, as that gap continues to widen. And so I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Also, too, going back to the, the previous point, if you were to raise wages to $15 an hour, you would actually take out Wendy's, which has a 2% profit margin. You would probably take out Yum Brands, which uh, has an 8% profit margin. That's the owners of KFC and Taco Bell. And you would definitely cripple McDonald's it does have a 19% profit margin, but again, you would you would close a lot of stores and you would stunt their growth for sure. And I know other businesses affected too. I, I had read, you know, we're talking about dog walkers and washers. We're talking, you know, healthcare industries for the elderly and all types of businesses, not just fast food, although that seems to be the focus. But it's it's a lot of mom and pop type things that could be affected as well. Oh, certainly. And if you think about our, our modern economy, it's based in many ways on these low wage jobs mm -hmm. and for them to stay low wage or what we would define as low wage. Mm -hmm. 
if $15 an hour suddenly becomes the, the new minimum for quote unquote low wage, then obviously it shifts everybody's business models and it becomes a matter of do you want to pay $450, 475 right. for, uh, for a Big Mac, that sort of thing. And Sean, only about a minute and a half remained. It's interesting to take a look at this because, as was mentioned earlier, the, the minimum wage was not designed to, to build a career upon. It was designed as a starter wage. But as you were mentioning, and, and many of us who voted against minimum wage increases during our days in Congress say it would be a job killer. It was interesting to hear you talk about the profit margins for those major fast food players and those guys facing economic extension extinction, ergo, it ends up costing jobs. Yeah, it, that's the, the, the double-edged sword. It's like it seems like you're helping people by raising the minimum wage, but in fact you're not because these companies only have so much of a picture of pot, and you've got to take every bit, everybody's employee money out of that pot. Well, the pot stays relatively the same, but if you increase the proportion of that's got to come out each time, you're going to reduce the number of workers that, that are in that, and then there's some, of course, that will hang up the you know, they'll hang up everything all together because they just simply can't play the game anymore because they can't afford to play employees. Maximum Jeopardy through the minimum wage. Sean Hyman, uh, the author of The Six Keys to Financial Success, and Jeff Yastin, our editorial director for Newsmax Financial Letters. Uh, it is good to have you with us today. We thank you for your input. Morgan and I, Morgan will be on the move, <laughs> but she'll be back, as will John Bogman. Your turn coming up once again on America's Forum, and here's the way you get a hold of us. Why don't you tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. There is also our e-dress via email, connect at NewsmaxTV.com. And don't forget Facebook, facebook.com backslash Newsmax.